now. Hello everyone. I want to welcome you to Grow Because You Know with Charlene Burke. Join me as we discuss doing things on purpose with purpose. Meet interesting people doing interesting things with their lives. Learn how to be more from those who grow and share their growth journey. You are a business owner. You are more than your thoughts. You are more than your spirit. You are more than your physical appearance. You are more than your emotions. You are greater than the sum of all of these. That is why this program focuses on talking about ideas, tips, programs, books, and more that will help you to grow your heart, grow your mind, and grow your business. Today's program is brought to you by Focus and Succeed Groups. You want to make more money, help more people, be a better version of yourself. You set a goal to create a product, to get focused on your marketing, to get more sales, to investigate technology, to improve your productivity. You started, but you lost momentum. Maybe you're halfway there, but you're not done. You've something unfinished on your desk, on your calendar, in front of you, every day reminding you that it needs to be finished. It's time for you to join a Focus and Succeed group because we will help you maintain momentum and finish what you started. 10 meetings, access to like-minded, focused people, guidance on chunking down that goal, virtual work sessions, virtual brainstorming meetings, private forum for discussions between meetings, access to me, Charlene, your leader, between meetings. So tell me, are you ready to get back on track? Are you ready to finish that product project? Are you ready to get it done? Then go to onlinemastermindgroup.com and get your seat today. I am so excited. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why I'm excited shortly as soon as I can get this picture out of here. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and show you why I'm so excited. Today I have with me Kelly McCausey. Kelly is an online business coach. She's a blogger, a podcaster, a designer, a partner, a creator of information products. She runs membership programs, holds live retreat programs, and coaches others to get where they want to be in an online business. She loves to travel and speak, do podcast interviews, and joint venture on projects that reach more people who are hungry to build a business that serves their lifestyle. I encourage you to get in touch with her anytime at kellymakazi.com. Today, Kelly is joining me to talk about community building, and I say a big welcome to you, Kelly. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Charlene. I'm so excited to be here. Well, I, I got excited because um, I know you through the Love People Make Money program that you have. Basically, I, I view that as the title of who you are and what you do. You have a Facebook group titled <laughs> that. Yes. And I've had the joy of being a member, I know, for well over a year. I've watched you. I've learned from you. I have um, engaged with you a bit. And I hear wonderful things about you from those who have uh, gone further in their relationship with you. The most important thing out of that for me and why I want to talk about community building today is because I watch you in that group and in others. And you do things on purpose. Now, I can't always figure out why you're doing <laughs> something in particular, but I can tell you that I watch people engage with you and with others because of whatever it is that you did. So that's why I want to hear more about community <laughs> building. <laughs> well, there isn't anything better than community, in, mm -hmm. in my opinion. So love the topic so 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 what it what it, can you think of something I've done that you're like I, I don't know why she's doing that has she lost her mind <laughs> oh that yeah that one actually you changed the name of the group oh yeah you've done it a couple of times it's the same Facebook group same yeah. community of people and it doesn't I don't know I don't know the stats right so I don't know that anybody leaves I haven't left but, <laughs> Right. Um, but you've changed the name and that really when I went the first time you did that, I went, you're nuts. Why are you doing that? Okay, I'll stick around and find out. I, I don't. Know. <laughs> well, it's, it's risky when you create a Facebook group and name it, if you name it and change the URL of the group, 
and then later decide to change it, it is changing the URL and Facebook will not redirect it. So if the link is out there somewhere and now it's changed, people are going to go to a dead link. So it was a big risk making a change. But um, so when I started the Facebook group, I, I forget what I originally called it. Um, but well, I went through a rebrand and I started, <clears throat> started a mastermind group program that I called that love people and make money. And then I decided that really does describe everything I do. So I wanted to expand that to be my whole brand, but I already had that Facebook group for private members. So I went with businesses better together for the public group. Mm -hmm. But then from a branding point of view, I didn't like it when people would say Kelly from businesses better together because that's not my brand. So <clears throat> when I finished, uh, I did a new logo this month and, and that's when I decided, well, I'm going to have the logo. I might as well go ahead and change the name and it's risky. I wouldn't recommend it as the very best practice in the whole world, okay. but you survive. If you've got a, if you've got a community that's enjoying its experience, it can survive a name change. Well, now that brings me to the question of how did you build a community yeah. that is responding positively to such a drastic change in a group name? Well, I don't think very many people gave it that much of, of much attention. Honestly, uh, I only had one single person say, hey, did you just change the name of the group? And, and I didn't have a single person say, oh, no, is it different now? I think... I just don't think that people made that much of a deal about it. Why do you think that is? <clears throat> that's, a, that's a good question. Um, well, because a community takes on its own identity. And it just, the names are not that important. And I hate saying that because because <laughs> choosing a domain name, choosing a brand name, it is important, but it's not what's going to define you. It's, I can, I can design a brand and I can think in my head and my, and feel in my heart, this is what it's going to be like, but I can't actually create that. Right. A community takes the shape of the community, mm -hmm. which the, so I know you, you wanted to, talk about community building and I, I do have uh, three, three statements for people to write down when it comes to creating a community. Beautiful, I'd love to hear them. So the first one is definitely, uh, if you're gonna love people and make money, it's about choosing a community that you wanna sink your roots deep into mm -hmm. and, and, and grow a big, I, I, I use, I think about a big tree versus an orchard. Some people, when they think about marketing online, they think of having multiple niches and multiple websites. They, they want to tend an orchard and have that orchard grow up and give them lots of fruit. And I don't think about it that way. I think about sinking my roots deep and growing a great big, huge oak tree that, that creates shade and, and joy and people want to gather around it. So if you're going to love people and make money, choose a community that you can just really fall in love with, that you care about and have an intention for that community. What do you want to do for that community? What kind of problems do you want to solve? What needs do you see that, that you would like to meet or be part of meeting? So go into it having an intention, like choose your community and decide what you want to bring to that community. Don't, don't think, um, don't think, well, I'm just going to show up and see what happens. You know, um, take some time and really get to know who they are and what their needs are. Okay. Have an intention going in, but so that's the first thing, have an intention. <laughs> But then I don't want you, 
I, when you think about a community, I want you to create a space for that community. So a Facebook group, I mean, it's easier than ever. You know, Charlene, when I started my way back, we were, we didn't have Facebook. Mm -hmm. So we created space in Yahoo groups. If you've been around that long, you remember <laughs> what that was like. <clears throat> uh, we had rise groups, rise.com. And some of us had private forums where we would install software on our own web hosting for the, for the purpose of creating and serving a community. And I had a community called mom masterminds. It was a private forum on my own website. So you would just create a space for people to come together and in creating that space, you're going to sow seeds of, of conversation and invite them to, to engage with you. Facebook makes it so easy these days, but there's, I've only been, I've only been on the Facebook group to, to train for a year and a half because prior to that, I was really happy with my own private forum. But my community really wanted the ease of Facebook. So we made, I made the shift. But it's not the only way to create a space. Uh, but that's always the easiest place to start. So create a space, create a Facebook group. There's other ways that I create space for my community. Uh, I have a mailing list where people can subscribe and, and be able to receive messages from me. I think of that as community a space for my community because they respond to my emails. I encourage them to hit reply and tell me what they think. So, so it's a community space. Um, my blog is a community space because I, I refuse to turn my comments off. I know a lot of people turn comments off on their blogs because they're afraid of spam and negative rooms. Um, a podcast is a space for your community. Well, you've created space for your community right here, Charlene. Mm -hmm. um, I create space by hosting retreats and inviting people to come and spend time with me and Nicole at the beach. And I create space by hosting events. Hosting events is probably, events and retreats are, are my favorite, all time favorite space because we're in person. Um, but what I do in an event is no different than what I do in my Facebook group or on my podcast. I'm creating space. I'm shining a light on somebody. And in the process, I end up looking good. Okay. So, so create a space and then start shining a light on other people. You know what, Charlene, I think a lot of folks, when they talk about community building, what they mean is, Hey, a bunch of you come over here and look at me. Hey, a bunch of you gather around and listen to me. Hey, <laughs> you over there, come on, be part of my community and buy something from me. So when they say community building, they mean selling, they mean, they mean marketing. And I'm not poo-pooing that because I I do want people to listen to me and I do want people to buy from me, but that's not the core purpose of the community at all. The core purpose of my community is so that I can shine lights on other people so that, so that I can invite them to share what they know and tell people what they do. Does, does that make sense? It does. I've seen you do it, doing lives into the group. I want to know how else, do you intentionally do that? Well, <clears throat> so this is the funny thing about community building. Um, if we go b back before Alice and I started Mom Masterminds together, that was in the summer of 2004. Mm -hmm. I started my internet radio show in November of 2003. Mm -hmm. I had no personal expertise whatsoever. I just had a lot of enthusiastic curiosity about how other moms were making money at home. So it was just a really natural fit. 
So I started the podcast and I started to interview people about how they were making money from home, shining a light on them, just asking curious questions. And, and as I did that, as I talked to all of these moms who were making it work, people would come to me and ask me questions about working at home. And I would say, well, go listen to this podcast. This person was really smart and make sure you listen to this podcast because this person, you know, had a great experience with that. I never said, Hey, I can answer that for you because I couldn't, mm -hmm. <laughs> I just couldn't. But the wildest thing happened in that space of like eight months, even though I was doing everything I could to shine a light on other people and say, they're the smart people. I, started getting called an expert on working at home. And I was, I was like, you're, you're crazy. I don't know nothing, <laughs> you know, but in the process of shining a light on other people, I did become an expert about one thing, hmm. podcasting. <laughs> when podcasting blew up in that summer, everybody and their brother and they all wanted to pay me to help. And so it's just so crazy. How did I get called an expert? How did I end up getting paid really well to help other people when I was just serving a community of people and shining a light on others? How the heck did that happen? Well, it just does. Yeah, I've well never learned. You mean I've, there wasn't like a secret little thing you can tell us? Like, I'm waiting, right? How does that happen? How does that happen? Well, it just does. It's the shining light. Yeah. The, you know, that is the secret sauce. I didn't know it then because I wasn't, it, I was not being intentional. I didn't say, okay, I'm going to start this podcast and then people are going to think I'm smart. I never thought that. But if you'll, if you'll just love people and meet their needs, mm -hmm. money is going to show up every stinking time. I agree. I, you know, one of my favorite Zig Ziglar quotes is you can have everything in life you want if you just help other people get what yes. they want. Yes. The secret, I think, to that is what you just described, which is there's a specific community that you wanted to serve. Yeah. Not just anybody and everybody who came your way, yeah. but it was you wanted to shine the light on moms who worked from home. Yeah. That was the community. That's where you were yeah. serving them to help them get what they wanted, which was exposure and a, a chance to, to share their thoughts and to maybe help somebody else yeah. in some way. Back then, the internet was really, it was really different. The communities that were growing were, were very organic. And most of my podcast guests were just, just, other work at home moms making something work. There weren't a lot of offers being made back then. Um, and, and there weren't, there weren't very many people offering to guide work at home moms on the path to building a business intentionally, which is what happened next was, was that <clears throat> what Alice was doing at internet based moms and what I was doing at work at home moms talk radio was such a beautiful uh, blend that that's why we decided to cooperate on launching a paid membership site, which was very successful. So you had a community that you saw you could serve even better. Yeah. So the product came after the community showed it up. Did. It did. It did. <clears throat> the, the mistake I see a lot of folks making today in that they say, all right, I get it. I'm supposed to have a community. <laughs> so they create a community um, they create a space, but then they just shine the light on themselves all the time. And there's, there's nothing to engage with there. You know, if, if I'm, if you're just going to broadcast to me all the time, you can do that from your Facebook page or your mailing list or your blog. That's not what a group is for. And, and unfortunately it's, it's happening all over the place. I, I've joined several Facebook groups with the hopes of finding a new community to engage with. And, and I'm just getting broadcast at yeah. by the leader and nobody's, maybe they're liking, but nobody's commenting. Nobody's asking questions because it's just another broadcast tool. 
Yes. And I just, you know, they're missing it. They're really missing it. So in your experience, did you try to build a community on purpose and have any oops? Or did you have any oops along the way? The community that you currently serve? So, yes, to, yes. <laughs> Uh, there was a really big surprise that occurred when we created, when we opened Mom Masterminds. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, everybody said, y'all are nuts. Work at home moms are broke, frugal, they'll never pay. This is never going to work. And Alice Siebel was the obstinate one that said, nah, I think it will. Um, so I can't claim any credit for having guts there. She had all the guts. Um, but it did work. It was very successful. I was just telling somebody yesterday, you know, my masterminds made like five, $6,000 a month. Mm -hmm. That was in 2004 when half of our members were still on dial up people, <laughs> you know, cause it doesn't sound like a not a lot today. If I ran a big membership site today and I was only making five or 6,000, I would be disappointed in that. Mm -hmm. But back then, it was knocking it down, and it was awesome. Um, but we thought the value of the community was um, the fact that they got to spend time with us and that we were going to deliver resources every month, training. So our sales page was all about access to us and training. We had no concept of what was going to happen next. And that is that the value of a community is the community. The people, the fact that every single person present in that community was paying to be there, took the water level and went, it was just freaking amazing. The, the cooperation and the joint ventures that took place there, the, it, the payoff for, for everyone who participated was so amazing. And, Alice and I would look at each other and go, we didn't create that. We tend that. We didn't even imagine that. It just happened. And so, you know what? Our sales page changed pretty quick mm -hmm. <clears throat> to, to emphasize, hey, this is the huge value here. Yes, it's wonderful that there's training. And it's wonderful that we're here to keep it real, you know, and make sure that people aren't giving dreadful advice to each other. But we let the community take its own shape, and it was beautiful. Um, so for so, me, what you just described, that's when it became a community. Yes. <clears throat> because this is, this is what I heard you say. Tell me if I'm off base. That you started a radio program, an internet radio program, so that you could shine the light on moms who are making money from home. Yep. Whether it was a full-blown business, freelance, it didn't matter. Yep. These were moms who were able to work from home. Yep. Because of that, people started asking you for resources, for information, for guidance on how to yep. do it themselves. Yep. Between you and Alice, who was offering, I'm assuming, offering training of some sort yep. and other services to basically moms at home, you said, you know what, why don't we combine our forces and just offer all of this because we can offer this to them. So you started the site and quickly realized that it really wasn't about you. Right. The real value was the community that came together and made use of the space that you provided yep. while still making use of who you were, I'm yeah. sure, and what you and Alice offered. But the community part started really happening yeah. in that space because that's where they worked together. Yeah. So what I'm guessing is that initially the name mattered because that's what attracted people to, to the community, if you will. But once the community took hold, the name doesn't matter because you can call it, you can call it Zappos. Yes. Zappo lovers, right? Yes. And they're not going to care, which is why I think you didn't get much response or reaction to the change of the Facebook group you yep. had. Yep. Because the community, we're there for each other, and we enjoy you, 
and we enjoy what you bring and we become customers of yours when it suits us, when the need yeah. is there and you offer something, but we still have these people that we can engage with in the space that you provided. Yeah. Okay. So it's interesting the the last thing. So the first one was have an intention. The second one is create a space. Mm -hmm. The third one is don't over control. Let some people, <laughs> some people have, have, have this idea. This is what it's going to look like. And this is what's going to happen. And they'll design those, those daily memes. And, and you can only talk about that on this day. And, and some people don't like anybody to post links in their group, which I'm just like, we're businesses, you know, um, I like the context of being able to click your link. I don't, you know, anyways, so don't try to over control. There's the, the coolest thing. One of my coaches, um, Bellany Deshong, she said something that was so brilliant. Um, you, you cannot create someone else's experience. Mm -hmm. You can create a space. You can, you can design content, but, but you cannot create what they experience. And the, it's so true. So, so I do live events. Mm -hmm. One of my events is exposure and profit. Yes, please tell us about that. I'm going. <laughs> yeah. The next one is, is coming up in August 10th, 11th and 12th. It's in Atlanta, Georgia. This is my fifth exposure and profit event. I have 14 speakers who are coming to talk about content marketing, community building, and zoning in on your perfect target market. Love it. Um, I have curated and chosen these speakers. I have orchestrated that to make sure that they're not talking about the exact same thing, mm -hmm. but what they bring, I trust them to bring. I'm not like nitpicking every little thing that they say or do. Um, so the best, as the best as I can, I've created, a, I've opened up a space. I have I filled it with smart people. I have curated the topics to flow together. So I have some intention. I have some space. But, but from there, I'm not going to try to control things. Good. I'm, You're not going to micromanage us when oh, we're there. <laughs> Here's, so, so, I didn't think you would. Some people who host events, they get real tense about it. They want, they want you Poor David Purdue gets such a hard time for me because he wanted us to be in the room like at 730 in the morning. And he only wanted to give us a little bit of time for lunch. And because he wanted to just cram value into every second of the event. And, and that's because he was trying to create the experience. Okay. Not, not slamming David. NAMS was a freaking awesome event. Oh, yeah. It's just really it should be. Just super different from what I do, which is, which is I don't fill, I don't expect you to be there till 930 to register. I give you two hours for lunch. I give lots of breaks because I don't have to cram your schedule full to make sure you get value. You're responsible for your value. I love that. So I trust you to come and get what you need. I trust you to create what you want. And, and, and in doing so, I get to relax. I'm the most relaxed person at Exposure and Profit. I love it. People, so tell us how to find, how, how can people viewing this register? Because I'm going um, to encourage you to register. You, you come see me. I'll be there. Come see Kelly. See all the wonderful speakers. Yeah, well, it's exposureandprofit.com. Okay. You can see the schedule there. You can see all the speakers. Most of the topics and descriptions have been loaded up at this point. There's a couple left that, that I'm still waiting for submissions to, to get polished up. Mm -hmm. um, the best thing about this event, so you talk about creating a space and not over controlling. So I have a party on Saturday night and there's always a theme. So two years ago, we did mustaches and tiaras. And I brought the tiaras and the mustaches. I just brought them in and had them out on a table at, at the party in the hotel lobby. And I turned around and men were wearing tiaras and women were wearing mustaches. And I was like, 
what are you guys doing? It never, this, this is how, this is how boring I am. It never occurred to me that this was going to happen. But it was so hilarious to see the guys in tiaras and the women wearing mustaches. If I had tried to control that and say, you're not, you can't do that. It would have been, it wouldn't have been half as fun. Well, and it would have sucked the fun right out of it for them. Yeah. <laughs> for those who were getting silly with it. So, so last year, um, it was gangster hats and pearls it was fun, but, um, we were, again, we were in the lobby of the hotel and one of my guests came to me and said, could you go bring your sound system down? I have one of those little wheelie sound systems with Bluetooth. She goes, would you bring it down so we could have some music? And I said, oh, I don't think they're going to be okay with that. Hmm. And she says, well, can we ask? And <laughs> yes, of course we can. So we asked and they said, okay. And I brought it down. What, what proceeded to happen, Charlene, doesn't make any sense because I had no intention for it, but the community did because Marusha took over being the DJ. Next thing I know, people are dancing in the kitchen area of the Hyatt place. And an hour later, the craziest impromptu Bohemian Rhapsody sing-along. <laughs> burst out I'm serious like I I'm sitting there and someone starts bohemian rasps at rhapsody everybody rushes in I love this song and all of a sudden they're all singing because everybody and, knows the words yeah and and Rebecca is head banging at the one part and everybody was just adoring it and I'm just like what the hell just happened because <laughs> because I'm not that fun. <laughs> totally. You know? that. I would be in shock if that happened in my house. Yeah. If, if I had, if I had said, all right, we're going to have an impromptu dance party and then we're going to sing this song. It probably, every probably would have looked at me like that sounds stupid, but because you just make a space and then don't try to over. Can someone ask for music? Okay, let's give it a shot. But by not over controlling, by letting the community do what it wants to do, it was an amazing bonding experience that so many people just treasure and love to look back at the videos of it. It, it, it is, it's amazing. So what does this have to do with business, right? You know, what is, what is mustaches and tiaras and mm -hmm. and rhapsody sing-alongs have to do with business? Exactly. Relationships were made. Lives were changed. People went home realizing people get me people like me and they were they were brave to to reach out and say hey can we do a webinar together hey you know i think i'd like to hire you as my coach hey you know i need a va can i hire you it it breaks down walls and and creates intimacy within the the community that has just it, it has changed it forever and it and I love it because it doesn't have anything to do with me. You just Not at all. Sit back and watch it. Yep. Yep. I Some know. people, this, this, this is something that gets under my skin. Hmm. When people say, um, I, I don't want to tell, I don't want to talk about someone specific, but there's this person who, who takes credit for every single thing that happens in one of their clients lives like look what i did look oh, what happened because yeah. of me and i get it i get it it makes for a great testimonial on your sales page but hello <laughs> what you did didn't it do that you didn't yeah. do that your client took what yep. you offered and ran with it and yep. made it change themselves now that's how i usually speak is that um you know i i had the pleasure of working with so and so and boy the things that they were able to do with yep. with what we talked about with the information that I was able to provide them the amazing success they had that I I, I have a little part in it you know yeah it's an awesome blessing when somebody comes back and thanks you yeah. for for something you spoke into their life or some advice you gave them it's wonderful it is um but 
if, if when, so when I think about this next exposure and profit event, mm -hmm. um, I'm just excited because I, I have, I do have an intention for the event. Of course I do. Um, but so some people host events and create Facebook groups and do everything else they do so that they can get your attention and make you an offer. And I, and I'm not gonna lie. I do the same thing, <laughs> but I, I'm going to make money no matter what, I, you know, that's, I, that's at, the sole purpose of you being there at the, at this point in my business trajectory, I have enough businesses up and running that are profitable funnels, operational income happening, whether, whether you buy anything from me because you attended exposure and profit, it, it doesn't even enter into the calculations for me. And this makes my coach a little crazy because most people have events in order to sell at the event. And it's like, nah, I just want to have a party really. <laughs> now that you know you can <laughs> and I like to shine a light on other people I like to see the amazing things that happen I don't have a solution for every problem in my community I don't but I'll, I'll do so I'll just shine a light on them I love that and I am, and so, looking forward. Forward. I am so looking forward to being there I that's <clears throat> it's going to be my first time just go ahead and say this publicly. Um, I've watched Kelly, and as I said, I've engaged a bit. Uh, but And I had, I had considered going to a couple of different other ones. I do know that one of the first times that I became a customer of Kelly's was when I purchased the recordings from one of the events that you had. Oh, wow. And um, that's when I said, yeah, I'm liking the way she has this set up. Just so you know, right? She's been around a while. Thank <laughs> so. you. I, I, I stopped recording my events uh, two years ago. I might record this one just because I can. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the quickest ways to make, to make me stress out at an event is to have, have AV involved. Right. <laughs> well, that's just that one additional technical layer yeah. you just don't want yeah. to do. But I'm blessed. I'm blessed to have an AV helper this time. And uh, so because I can, I probably will record and we'll see. I might make some recordings available. Fantastic. Well, I'll be sure to put links to your website as well as exposureandprofit.com, right? Yep. That's what it's called, yep. exposureandprofit.com. And um, other details in the description of this particular program. Kelly, thank right. you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure to discuss community building, to learn a little bit more about you, and to let everybody know that there are some things that you can do, but more importantly, to understand what you don't need to do in order to build a community. I like That's what I'm taking away. Those who are watching and listening later, I want you to tell me what you took away from this. Connect with Kelly, learn more about her. Connect with me, and we'll have a conversation. Any last words that you'd like to leave us with, Kelly? Uh, just that you have, you have a community. You may not be the leader of the community right now. That's okay. You can still bring a lot to your community. Sow seeds of of that you would like to harvest in whatever communities you're part of and keep your eye out because I, I believe you might just realize there is a community that you want to create a space for. So be brave and go for it. Thank you so much. And now, you know, so go forth and grow.